Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe has updated Photoshop to version 23.2.0 and with this release, Adobe is claiming they've improved their neural filters. In this video, we're going to see if they actually are improved. For those of you not familiar with neural filters, they were something that Adobe added to Photoshop a few years ago. And at first they were uh, kind of experimental and in beta, but several of them are not in beta anymore and are meant for regular use. And those are the ones that we're going to be taking a look at in this video. Now you can see here I have a portrait and one of the neural filters will smooth skin. and to get to the neural filters, you just have to go up to filter and then down to neural filters. And I mentioned we're going to take a look at the ones today that are not in beta. This includes skin smoothing, super zoom, JPEG, artifacts removal, colorize, and style transfer. I will not be looking at the ones in beta, but if you're interested, let me know in the comments below and perhaps I'll do a future video on those. Now, as we mentioned, this is a portrait I want to smooth skin. So all you need to do is go to here. And by the way, if you just hover over these, you'll get a little tool tip telling you what the um, actual neural filter does. In this case, skin smoothing, skin smoothing, adjust and remove skin imperfections and acne from portraits. So we're going to turn it on. And when I turn it on, you can see it smoothed the skin and it gives you some default settings in this case on two sliders, blur and smoothness. Now, if you feel that it's too blurry or too smooth, of course, you could always kick these down a little bit and let it render. Or if you want more, maybe you're going for kind of a, maybe a porcelain doll kind of look, uh, you could do that as well. And you could see it smoothed the skin a great deal in this instance. If you want to see a before after in the lower left-hand corner of the neural filter dialog box, you just click on this icon. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now that's a little bit too heavy handed for my taste. So I'm just going to dial those down a bit. And then I could do a before after again. There's before and there's after. All right. So I think that did a really nice job and I would um, agree. I think the skin smoothing is improved from what I've seen in the previous version. So I think it's doing a pretty nice job. Now, once you're satisfied with the neural filter, you have the option to save it to a new layer or to the current layer. And I wouldn't recommend you save it to the current layer unless your current layer happens to be a new layer already, because then you're working destructively and you prefer not to work destructively. And I'll explain that more in a moment. Or a new layer masked. Uh, you may want to send it to a new layer with a mask if you're going to be doing other adjustments to that layer and you want those adjustments only to affect the face of the individual, you don't want them, those adjustments to affect in this case, the chair or her shoulders. If she wasn't in, or in front of a seamless paper background, let's say she was in front of, you know, trees and things, and you didn't want your adjustments to affect those, then choose new layer masked. Uh, you could do a smart filter or a new document. Um, in this case, we'll just stay with the default new layer and I'll click OK. Now, I mentioned about working destructively and non-destructively. This is working non-destructively. I have this new layer and I always could get rid of it if I want to go back to the original image. Turn it back on and there is the skin smoothing. If I close Photoshop down and reopen it, these and I save it as a PSD or TIF file, these layers will stay intact and I could then revert back to the original. If I did it to the original background layer, if I close Photoshop and reopen it, it's baked in now and I can't do anything about it. So that's why you would prefer to try to work non-destructively when possible. All right, let's go to the next neural filter. Uh, I think it's called Super Zoom. I have this image here of the bird. It's not really a great image, but I kind of like the bird's head. and. I want to super zoom into the bird's head. So we're going to do that. We're going to go to filter, neural filter, and it's super zoom. We'll hover over it. 
and it tells you zoom in and crop an image, then let Photoshop add detail to compensate for the loss of resolution. All right, very good. So we're gonna turn that on and you'll have this little uh, navigating uh, window right here. And this is where you zoom in. So we're just going to zoom in once and it's going 2X. You'll notice at the bottom, it says processing on device. With some of the neural filters, it processes on the computer. With other neural filters, it will process on Adobe's computer. So you'd need an active internet connection. As a matter of fact, skin smoothing uh, did access Adobe's computers. It just was a lot faster than this. You can see this is going relatively slow. Um, but I want to zoom in more than this. So I'm going to click plus again and click plus again. I'm at 4X now. Uh, let's even click it a little more. Now I need to reposition it. Just drag, click and drag. So I want to zoom in on the um, bird's head here. I want to enhance, enhance the image details. If there was noise, I could add noise reduction. I do want to sharpen it, so we'll add a lot of sharpening. And if this had a person in it, you would check this box and it would enhance the face details in a way that is satisfactory for a person. In, case, in this case, of course, we don't have a person in the shot. Now, if we look down on processing on device, it's saying it's going to take seven minutes. So we're not going to sit here and chat for seven minutes. I'll pause the video. And when we come back, it will be finished. Okay, it finished. It definitely took less than seven minutes, although I didn't time it. Now, it's kind of hard to show you a before after here. I could do a before, but I'm not sure you could really see anything. And But we'll click OK. I'm going to output it to a new layer. And then when we're into uh, Photoshop, you'll see that it's zoomed in. And if I go to the layer below it, you could see that it's not zoomed in. Now, you know, there's not much I could do here. We could try to look at it this way, but that will be zoomed in even more. So it's hard to say. In my opinion, I don't think it did a very good job. Now, I did zoom in a lot, all right? I did crop a lot, let's say, and zoomed way in. But if you look, there's just a lot of little kind of weird kind of digital noise uh, on the edges. So I really didn't care for the way this worked. If you disagree with me with the quality of this um, neural filter, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'm just trying to, you know, I'm expecting too much from it. I'm zooming in too much. I'm cropping too much of the image. But let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Now, the next one is JPEG artifact removal. Staying with the theme of birds, I have this image here. What I did was um, I exported this from Lightroom uh, as a JPEG with a quality of zero. So there are a considerable amount of JPEG artifacts in this image uh, just loaded with it. Um, I'm not sure you could see it in the video, but there's all these kind of little blocks here. Let me try to zoom in again. Can't zoom in more, but there we go. So you can see these little squares, hopefully. Um, so there's a lot of JPEG artifacts here. So let's send this uh, to uh, the neural filters. We'll go up to filter and then down to neural filters. And I mentioned it's JPEGs. JPEG artifact removal. And looking at the tooltip, it says JPEG artifacts removal removes artifacts resulting from JPEG compression. Now I mentioned I exported this from Lightroom with a quality of zero. Quality is really um, referring to how much J um, JPEG compression it will do to the image. The lower the number, the more compression will happen. So we're gonna just turn this on and we'll go for high. Again, it's processing on the device right here. Uh, this is an improvement too. Most of these neural filters, when they were initially released, had to access Adobe servers. They didn't process on your device. And if you're wondering how fast my computer is or whatever, it's not that old. It's a little over a year old. And I'll have my computer specs in the description below this video so you could get an idea of how powerful my machine is relative to how long it's taking to do this processing. Now, of course, this is faster than the super zoom, but it is um, still taking a bit. So let it do its thing. 
All right, it's done. Now it does look smoother to me just in the glance here. So there's a before and there's an after. You can see it's, it's definitely blurrier. There's before and there's after. Let's output it to a new layer. And then uh, let's zoom in. I'll hit Command Plus a couple times. I'll drag it over this way and up a little bit. And there's before and there's after. Okay, now look over here. Let me zoom in a little more. And you could hopefully you could see in the video these little squares. All right, now here's the after. See how it smoothed out all those little squares? So it got rid of the JPEG compression artifacts but it sacrificed detail and sharpness when it did that. So again, there's before and there's after. So not something I'm probably ever going to use because typically I won't be exporting images at very uh, low resolution, or I should say at highly compressed with very low quality. Uh, so it's not something I would often do. I think the application for this is if you download an image from the internet that you need for something and it's a, an image you're allowed to use obviously and it just has tons of jpeg compression it's a really small image this uh, might come in handy so this is something you may want to use all right next we're going to do colorize and i have this image i took off of wiki commons uh, wiki commons supposedly it's um I'm allowed to use it. It's a picture of Anne Margaret. So we're going to colorize this. We're going to go to filter, neural filters. And again, we're going to do colorize. I'll hover over that. Uh, colorize helps with recolorization of black and white photographs. And we'll turn it on. And it, it did a pretty good job. I think it did a nice job. Now, uh, you can manually color the image by clicking on certain spots. I'm not going to here. I found I've never had to do this. And I have used this a little bit here and there with some family photographs. I was messing around with the old, you know, pictures of my mom and things like that that were in black and white. And I found it works really well. There are adjustments. You just need to roll it open. And you could see that you could uh, adjust the... Um, the actual saturation in the image, the balance between cyan and red, magenta and green, yellow and blue. You could um, remove some artifacts if there's some there, and you could reduce noise if you have noise. But I think the neat part here is the profiles. Uh, the profiles are very interesting. So you could close that down and still, oh no, you can't. So let's go to profiles. This here um, gives you different looks. For example, retro high contrast. You can see it, how it gives you that kind of 70s vibe, like saturated color, you know, and very high contrast, retro blue-brown. Some of these are more subtle and you won't see as much. There's retro yellow, purple yellow. A lot of times you do, you know, with some different films, you'll get these different looks. Retro red and so on. So you could go through retro green. Don't care for that one myself. Retro faded, I kind of like faded looks sometimes. Here it's okay. Retro denim, retro dark, and retro brown. They could have probably got rid of the retro. They didn't have to write retro every time. But I like the retro high contrast. I just kind of like that. Well, I'll put that to a new layer. And by the way, here's the before after. There's before and there's after. So we'll click okay. And it brought us back uh, and then we could do a before after here. There's before, and there's after. So I think it did a very, very, very nice job. All right, you know what? There's one more and I'm just gonna reuse this image. So we're gonna go up to filter and we're gonna go up to, uh, or down to neural filters. And the one I'm talking about is style transfer. This is where you could take the style of a famous artist and you could then make your image look like a painting in that style. So we'll turn this on and you can see that there's uh, different styles here. Let's go with this kind of more Van Gogh look. You can kind of see that. Um, there's kind of a look there. So you get an idea. You just click through these. This is, isn't anything personally I would use, but a lot of people are into this, you know, different looks. Now you do have image styles here. You click on that and these are just kind of other various types of image styles. Here's a Van Gogh look here. Didn't care for that one. There's a Picasso maybe. Um, but 
go through and you just click through that. It's kind of interesting. You also could do custom where you could uh, upload an image of yours and copy that style. I didn't uh, prepare for anything like this, but you could experiment with it. This isn't something I typically would do, uh, but it may be something that you really like. So uh, you could experiment with these. There was one, which one did I like? This one? Kind of like that, I guess. Kind of, I kind of like that one too. So it's kind of neat. You could do different things with it. Now, overall, as far as the neural filters, are they, and I'm doing finger pro quotes, you can't see me, uh, improved? I think they are. They seem to be working much faster and they are more often accessing my computer so they don't have to access Adobe servers. So I think they are improved in that regard. Now, admittedly, I don't use most of these uh, I really don't use skin smoothing because I prefer to use other applications for that, such as I recently did a video on On One Portrait AI, and also there is Luminar Neo, which does portraits. So I'd prefer to use those applications or to use Photoshop where there's a routine I have over the years of processing a port portrait manually. So, um, I, I don't really use skin smoothing, although creating these videos and doing these demos, I have used it quite a bit, the neural filter skin smoothing as a demo, and I do think it is improved. I never use super zoom. I prefer to use gigapixel AI by Topaz Labs for that, and I still think that's much better. You have a lot more control over it, and I did, really didn't like the results that we got with it in this application. Um, JPEG artifacts removal, again, that's not something I would use, so I really can't comment one way or another. So if you have more experience with any of these neural filters than I do, please comment uh, below and let us know what you think of how they work. Colorize is something I've messed around with, and I think it's working much faster, and it seems to be working much more accurately as far as the colors are concerned and giving a much more realistic look, so I think that has improved. And style transfer is absolutely something I've never really used except for demos in these videos. Um, it does seem to be working well, um, but I can't really comment or whether or not it's working better. So we'll, uh, I'll put this to a new layer again. And again, because we're working non-destructively, we have these three layers. So there's our uh, layer with this you know, kind of effect done to it. There's our colorized layer, and there's the original black and white layer. So again, if I save this as a PSD or a TIFF, and then I reopen it in Photoshop, I will have these three layers there. So I could revert back to the original if I need to. If you save it as a JPEG or a flattened TIFF or a flattened PSD, you'll lose the layers and you'll be destructive. So you got to make sure you preserve your layers in a TIFF and a PSD or a PSD to preserve uh, these layers so that you could go back to the original. Hopefully, hopefully that made sense. That's it. That's the neural filters. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>